Most people have at least heard of Alan Turing. He's the guy who broke the German ciphers and may have shortened World War II significantly. However, he didn't do this alone. He had a whole team of people working with him who were vital to his work, and he wouldn't have been able to accomplish what he did without them. One of the most notable of his team members is Joan Clark, the only woman working on the team that broke the German Enigma Code, and one of history's lesser known faces. Joan Elizabeth Lowther Clark was born on June 24, 1917 in London, England to Dorothy and William Clark. She was the youngest of five siblings with three older brothers and one older sister. Clark attended the Dulwich High School for Girls and won a scholarship to attend Newnham College at Cambridge in 1936. She received a double first degree in mathematics and was a wrangler. A double first degree, according to Merriam-Webster, is first-class honors in two different subjects. A wrangler at Cambridge was a student who achieved first-class honors in their third year of the university's undergraduate mathematics degree. She was also awarded the Philippa Fawcett Prize in 1939 and the Helen Gladstone Scholarship from 1939 to 1940. However, in spite of all of this, she couldn't receive a full degree as women weren't allowed to receive full degrees at Cambridge until 1948. One of her professors from her time at Cambridge, Gordon Welchman, recruited her to the Government Code and Cipher School, or GCCS, at Bletchley Park. The GCCS was an organization formed secretly in 1939 to break the German Enigma Code. The Enigma Code is quite complicated, so here's the Cliff's Notes version. As a part of their communications, the Germans had developed Enigma machines to encrypt messages so that the Allies couldn't interpret their communications when they were inevitably intercepted. It pretty much scrambled up the alphabet into ciphertext. Then the ciphertext would be turned back into plain text using specific settings on the machine. You had to know the exact settings for the machine to be able to decrypt the message, and these settings were changed daily. There were literally billions of ways to encrypt a single message using the Enigma machine. It's not surprising that most people, allies, and Axis believed the code to be unbreakable. However, the GCCS was determined to do it anyway. Really quickly, just want to point out, one of the biggest reasons why they needed to break the Enigma code was because the Germans were using it to communicate with what were called wolf packs, or groups of German U-boats that would attack Allied convoys and destroy vital supplies. Back to Joan. She arrived at Bletchley Park on June 17, 1940, and was originally placed with The Girls in Hut 8. The Girls was the name affectionately given to the women who did clerical duties for the GCCS. However, Clark was soon moved to Alan Turing's Codebreaker team, in her own words, because of her degree. Back then, women still weren't paid even close to the same as men were, so she was given the linguist grades that she could get a pay raise even though she didn't speak another language. She once said that she enjoyed answering a questionnaire with grade linguist, languages none. Another option she had to increase her pay would be to join the Women's Royal Naval Service, but she declined. Even though there were four people on the original team, Turing Clark, Tony Kendrick, and Peter Twin, Turing is the most famous because he invented the code-breaking technique called Banbarisms. More people were added to Turing's group after his invention, and the team grew to nine Banbaris, with Joan being the only woman. However, she was considered one of the best, and the technique fascinated her. She would sometimes not even want to hand over her work at the end of her shift because she wanted to run just a few more tests. At one point, Clark actually devised a way to speed up the technique and was informed, to her surprise, that she had used pure delissimus, which was a concept invented by one of the few cryptographic experts from World War I, Dillwyn or Dilly Knox. Knox was actually the man who originally headed the attack on the Enigma Code. Let's detour to some wholesomeness for a second. Clark and Turing were very close friends during their time working together at Bletchley. They eventually became inseparable, and Turing started arranging their shifts specifically so that they could work together. They also spent many of their off-duty days together. Turing ended up proposing to Clark, and she accepted. However, a few days later, Turing admitted to Clark that he had homosexual tendencies. She was reportedly unfazed by the confession, and also said she wasn't surprised. 
However, she wasn't deterred by the confession and the engagement continued. At that time in the UK, women were pretty much expected to get married, and marriage didn't necessarily have to correlate with sexual desires. Actually, the best way for a gay man to stay in the closet would be to marry a woman, and vice versa. However, they did end up breaking off the engagement when Turing realized his tendencies would lead to a failed marriage. They were still very close and stayed friends after the breakup. Back to the war stuff now. The team's breakthrough finally came in February and June 1941, and the Allies were finally able to decrypt the Germans' communications. For some context on the effect this had, let's get into some numbers. Between March and June of 1941, 282,000 tons of shipping were sunk per month. In July of 1941, that number was cut in half to 120,000 tons. And in November of 1941, the number was down to 62,000 tons. That's one-fourth of the original amount. Clark and the rest of the team successfully performed banbarisms until August 1943 when Turing designed the British bomb, which was based on a device from Poland known as the Bomba. The team also attempted to break the dolphin enigma and the shark enigma in their time together. They succeeded in breaking the dolphin enigma, but the US team ended up taking over the shark enigma. Eventually, many of the staff members in Hut 8 were relocated to other parts of Bletchley Park. Joan, however, ended up staying and became deputy head in 1944. She and her team worked on the enigma code until the war ended in 1945. When the war ended, all of the staff were vacated from Bletchley Park and all of the evidence of the secret code breaking was disposed of. Clark moved to work in Bletchley's successor organization, the Government Communications Headquarters, and was appointed as a member of the Order of the British Empire in 1946. She did end up getting married in 1952 to Colonel J.K. Murray and moved to Scotland because of his health problems. Murray had previously written a publication about numismatics, and Clark became fascinated by it. She eventually went on to establish the sequence of the complex series of gold unicorn and heavy groat coins that circulated circulated in Scotland during the reign of James III and James IV. She was awarded the Sanford Saltus Gold Medal for her work. Murray ended up dying from his health issues in 1986, and shortly after, Clark moved near Oxford to continue her numismatic research. On September 4, 1996, Joan Clark died in Oxfordshire, England at age 79. Because of the Official Secrets Act, we may never know the extent of her mathematical and cryptanalytic achievements. What we do know is that she was a very, very impressive woman. And there you have it, one of history's lesser known faces, Joan Clark. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.